The pH scale is a convenient measure of the overall acidity of a solution. When we look at a reaction of a chemical with an acid, in this example zinc with hydrochloric acid, it's often the case that it isn't so much the concentration of that molecular acid, the hydrochloric acid, that matters. Instead, the zinc um, reacts with hydronium ions that are formed in solution when that acid dissociates. Because not all molecular acids dissociate completely, and because there may be more than one type of acid in a solution, a better measure of the overall acidity or basicity of a solution is often that concentration of the hydronium ion. Now, in a neutral solution, in pure water, that hydronium ion will have a concentration of approximately 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. And that very small concentration with the large exponent is not a terribly convenient number to banter about as the acidity of a solution. A second problem that we encounter is that this number can vary wildly all the way from about 1 molar down to about 1 times 10 to the negative 14 molar. And for this reason, again, it's not a terribly convenient scale. Instead, we talk about acidity or basicity of the solution on a log scale. And the log scale is simply taking the logarithm of those numbers. And so log of 1 would be 0. And log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7 would be negative 7. We're going to go ahead and take a negative logarithm. And so we get 7 for a neutral solution. And all the way out at the other end of the spectrum, we'll end up with a, a 14. And this is a more convenient way to talk about the acidity of a solution. And this is what we're going to call the P function. So the, the P function of H, pH, is going to just be the negative logarithm of that number. We can use P functions of other things. You'll see pKa, pKb. POH. Um, you might encounter P functions of, say, a calcium ion concentration or a, a lead concentration. All of these are just the negative logarithm of those concentrations. For this course, we're primarily going to be interested in pH, and these top three you may encounter. So if we talk about these values, it's useful to talk about a neutral solution. A neutral solution would be an example something like pure water and as I mentioned the concentration of the hydronium ion in neutral water is about 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. We'll get to how we find this in a minute but will also have approximately 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 molar hydroxide ion. A neutral solution is one in which those two are very similar or the same. Okay, and we might have a pH of 7. In acidic solutions, maybe, in acidic solutions, you would have a higher concentration of that hydronium ion, and at this extreme end we might label it as one molar. The hydroxide ion concentration and the hydronium ion concentration will be in equilibrium, and so that will drop very low to about 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 molar OH-. And this will be a pH of zero. These are acidic solutions. And the closer the pH is to zero, the more acidic the solution is. Around pH seven, it's a neutral solution. And as we go to the other end, this hydronium ion concentration will drop dramatically. and the hydroxide ion will significantly increase. And this will give a pH value that's greater than 7. 
up towards 14. Now notice in these solutions the hydroxide ion concentration is dominant and much greater than the hydronium ion concentration. These are basic solutions. So these scales let us talk very conveniently about how acidic or basic a solution. A solution is more acidic as it approaches zero and it's more basic as it approaches 14. We can convert in between all of these values with some relatively simple relationships. If we talk about the concentration of the hydronium ion and the concentration of the hydroxide ion, we can convert back and forth between these numbers using the KW relationship where KW is the equilibrium constant for the dissociation of water and it will be the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. And a little algebra makes this pretty easy to solve. KW for this class will use 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 which is the value at about 25 degrees Celsius. That value is temperature dependent and it's important to note that value has two significant figures. We talked about pH being a more convenient way to represent the hydronium ion concentration. If we want to calculate pH from H+, pH was the negative log of the concentration of H+. If you remember your properties of logarithms from high school math, you can inverse a log function by taking 10 to the x. So my concentration of H+, plus, if I needed to calculate that from the pH, would be 10 to the negative pH. And so I can go back and forth between the hydronium ion concentration and the pH in that manner. And you can do the same thing with the hydroxide ion concentration, that the concentration of hydroxide ion con uh, hydroxide ion will be equal to 10 to the negative pOH and the pOH will be the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration and this sort of fourth leg if we take this function here and we take the negative logarithm of both sides what we'll find is that the number 14 will be equal to the pH plus the pOH. And if I'm paying attention to significant figures, I should say 14.00 will equal pH plus pOH. And that's only at 25 degrees Celsius, but for this course, we'll assume that all of that applies. So. With these various conversions, if I give you any one of these values, you should be able to calculate all of the others. We're not going to spend much time on pOH, so I want you to be sure that you can do those conversions. Um, and that's going to be relatively straightforward if you remember these equations and these steps. The next video will practice a few of these calculations.